Hello, I'm Alan, welcome to the Tar Shack. Today's video is about preparation for sale for this 2015 Epiphone Sheraton 2 Pro that I have, um, which is coming um, it's in good overall condition, it's a bit dusty, um, 2015 model, um, it's got some missing knobs which I'll replace and it's also got a problem with one of the volume pots because they are push pulls, but on this one, it pulls all the way out so I'm gonna have to replace the wiring on this which I'll be doing and then I'll be prepping it for sale on my uh, reverb shop so the easy part was getting the old harness out um, it all goes in quite easily through the F holes or came out through the F holes quite easily so I'm hoping that the new one will go in just as easily um, we do need to use hooks or wire to make sure that I'm able to fish it out through the holes. But I've got another standard um, Sheraton 2 Pro wiring harness, which is going to go straight in with no modifications. So hopefully it'll be a, a relatively straightforward install. First thing first though, is to give the entire guitar um, a good wipe down with a, with a damp cloth, um, get it cleaned up and a bit more sanitary, and then we can get into the more technical aspects of it. So that's the guitar clean. Uh, the frets are going to need a good polish. I'll check them for level and I'll level crown and polish them as I usually do if that's required. But I'll certainly check them all and then um, get them sparkling and shiny and smooth. Um, no obvious damage anywhere on the body. This is a, it was a bit dusty but it's in decent condition. Um, Nice clean cavities. All the hardware is off, that'll all get uh, cleaned and polished before I put it back on. And yeah, so this is ready to start the reassembly of the wiring. Quick shot of the uh, Pro Burkers. So we've got a Pro Burker 2 for the neck and a Pro Burker 3 for the bridge. So here is the offending wiring harness with the, um, so it's got an Epiphone branded switch, which is pretty decent actually. Um, we've got the push-pull volume for the uh, neck, which was pulling out and was broken. That then follows round to the tone for that and off to the jack socket which is epiphone branded and then back round we've got the uh, bridge controls so these are full sized alpha pots on the tone controls 500k and then we've got push pulls which are mini pots with the push pulls attached so I'm going to replace this harness with another genuine Sheraton harness, which I'm taking out of my own personal Sheraton. Um, so that is a 2020 model. Um, so it should be exactly the same and that will retain the full functionality. And then just out of interest, what I'm doing with that one is I have purchased a, a sort of upgraded uh, CTS and uh, paper and oil capacitors and switchcraft um, harness which I'm going to use as a template and then I've got an identical kit of parts which I'm going to use to make up um, an identical harness which will be put into my 335 copy so I'm doing quite a lot of moving around of these so hopefully by the end of this I will have it down to an absolute um, art how to get these in and out of um, 
Sheratons and 335s. So this will be the first one and it's going with standard FA phone parts which came out easily and I'm hoping will go back easily. And then when I do my own Sheraton, I'll be using the upgraded parts and then that might be a little bit more complicated because of the um, the bigger and perhaps a little bit more bulky um, components, but we'll see. So here is the harness that's come out of the 2020 model and I've checked everything and confirmed that it is identical to the earlier one that we took out. Um, the only difference is that the, uh, the ground wire went to the tone control uh, in this case but you know that's fine as long as it's grounded then um, I will just make sure I put it on the that pot and then everything should work perfectly so the next challenge is putting it back in and of course that's where the fun might begin <laughs> Okay, that's nice and secure, and that is the only piece of actual soldering which we need to do, which is nice. Right, so I think the sequence I'm going to aim for is uh, output jack first, and then I need to go, this tone pot goes in there, this is the neck volume pot which is in here, and then I've got the bridge, tone and volumes. So I'm going to try and pull this through, first of all. No, I'm not. First I'm going to attach the pickups and see whether how that works. So, neck pickup. So we've got a decent sized hole in the Epiphone Sheraton, but it's not big enough to pull the pots through, I don't think. Well, it's definitely not, actually. Um, but that's, that's the neck. And then the bridge. These have all been cleaned and polished already. Because I'm a bit like that. Okay, so bridge. So neck connects to where do these connections go? Go that way. That one. And then this connects to this one. So that's gonna sit upright like that so we want to connect it in that direction so the first thing i'm going to do is just test that that does actually work because this would be a bit of a disaster if i plugged it all back in and it didn't Lots of volumes and tones all the way up. And then check the color splits. See the difference in output? Yeah, half the output. That's why I never use coil splits. 
Okay, so we're good to go on that front. That's excellent. So now I'm going, I've got this wire fed through They run round in that direction, so I want this one over there, and I want it above the other wiring. So I am told that the trick with these pot with these is to have a washer which won't pull through, but which will then come back off easily and then that will fit in no the trick is actually to put it in from the correct direction <laughs> so I did say there was going to be a few fuck ups so this needs to pull it through up the way doesn't it okay so we're going to take that I'm going to put a washer around or a nut around it I'm going to pull that back through taking care to avoid getting it caught up in the actual switch itself. So let's see how that goes. Let's pull it over. Okay, so that's up. Now, I haven't got any lock washers have come off this harness of either of the harnesses that I took out. So I can only assume either there are no lock washers or that they are locked into. No, there aren't any, which is interesting. Okay, so I'm going to pull that through and then... It's always the wrong one. Slightly hard to lock the actual thing, the actual socket in place. But let's pull this out and then see where that takes us. So we have an output jack. works okay job number one I'm not actually expecting this one to work I just feel it's one that's worth a try because it's very close and it's kind of about the orientation more than anything else at this stage, I think. Bingo. 
he says, grabbing onto it for dear life. Okay. So I have one tone control. Second tone control, which is just under here, which surely is going to be a more straightforward waggle into place job. I think really it's about getting the wires orientated so that it sits correctly and then it should if not easily, but at least without too much drama, lift up into place. So this is pretty close. This might be a job for tweezers. So I have a very high quality luthier tool known as Missy's Guitar Shack's eyebrow tweezers. Again, surprised at the lack of any kind of lock washers on the spring washers on the back of these, but there weren't any. Okay, right, so this volume. straightforward. We've got wires pointing in the correct orientations. Just see what we're doing in terms of pickup wires. Okay, so that's orientated correctly. So what I need to do is to find a way to just tilt this over enough to get it into the hole. But since I've got two-handed access. This is quite tight because of the height of the pot. I'm stuck on wires. No. It is literally just needs And there we go. We're in. So I have four controls and then switch.
I knew I was going to do that with at least one of them. <laughs> right, how have we got a spare one of those floating about? Of all the cheap investments in guitar tools, a switch spanner is definitely one to go for. I think it was about five, but it's so good. Just means it doesn't slip, gives you a nice positive connection. Right then, moment of truth. Just see what we're doing in terms of pickup wires. Yes. Okay, so that's orientated correctly. So what I need to do is to find a way to just tilt this over enough to get it into the hole. But since I've got two-handed access this is quite tight because of the height of the pot I'm stuck on wires no it is literally just needs And there we go. We're in. So I have four controls and then switch. I knew I was going to do that with at least one of them. <laughs> right, how have we got a spare one of those floating about?
all the cheap investments in guitar tools, a switch spanner is definitely one to go for. I think it was about a fiver, but it's so good. Just means it doesn't slip, gives you a nice positive connection. Right then, moment of truth. am I doing? Yep, well done. So that actually wasn't too bad. Um, all things considered, it could have been a lot worse. So, I think the key is just to think about what are you rooting to where? And then make sure that the wiring isn't going anywhere that it shouldn't. Because actually, for all the horror stories, I don't think that was that bad. So, wiring done, uh, pickups are back in and screwed into place and I've checked that all the wiring is hidden from view, which it is, so I think it's probably followed the original factory tracks, hopefully. Um, so that's that one done. So onwards and upwards to the frets. And here we have the end result. So the frets have been leveled, end dressed, crowned, polished, and the board's been lemon oiled. So that's all the technical work done. It's just uh, clean up and restring and get it set up. So here's the end result. So just to recap, this has been rewired, um, deep cleaned, had full fret work done to it, level crowned and polished. Um, and then it's been restrung with Ernie Ball 10s and fully set up. So this is uh, ready to go and it will be on my reverb shop shortly. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that and see you back in the shack soon.